Are you training your German short hair pointer but you're really struggling to get them to stay? Well, this is the perfect video for you. Welcome back to the Fenrir German Short Hair Pointer Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the German Short Hair Pointer and then how to become a high level canine leader so you can raise your very own. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. Training a German Short Hair Pointer can be an absolute delight as they're so keen to learn. However, if you're really struggling to get them to stay, don't worry. Today we have the perfect webinar for you. We're going to be tuning into a webinar that the canine and behaviorist and founder of FenrirK9Leaders.com, Will, has recorded all about how to get your dog to stay. So over to you, Will. So teaching a dog to stay is one of my absolutely impeccable manners-based obedience tricks, as it were. When I help people with my perfect puppy course in training dogs, one of my mandatory obedience things is a really good stay. Now, stay can feel a little bit more difficult to teach. We go into it at length over on my perfect puppy course, but I wanted to give you kind of the foundations and principles behind how we teach a dog to stay in this quick fire webinar. Now with most obedience tricks we can usually utilize a lure based approach so we can get something that the dog's interested in. I teach it with a piece of food, some people will teach it with a luring stick or marker and we lure the dog into the position that we want them to be in. Then when they're in that position we then mark it with our verbal cue and then we positively reinforce that behavior and we repeat that and we drill that and we can start to build on top of that and that teaches the behavior or the trick that we're trying to teach our dog. It's a little bit different with stay because we can't necessarily lure them into a stay. So because we've already taught the dog a rock solid sit, we can build stay on top of that by free shaping the behavior. What that means is that we teach the dog the sit and we put them into the sit position. Then we use our verbal marker first of stay and we ask for a very short period of time of the dog's remaining in the sit behavior. Then we praise and reinforce that. And once we've asked them to stay, we give them a second, so it might look like this. If we use my dog Sully as an example, Sully sit, good sit, Sully stay, good stay, and then they get the reward on the good stay. So we've marked them. Now in the dog's mind, they'll be a bit confused to start with. Then what you want to do is simply build up the amount of time, distance, and distractions that you ask that stay behavior in. So we start like all building blocks and foundation layers of teaching a dog to learn a new behavior under very low distraction. Set them up for success and make it as easy as possible for them to achieve that success. We can then celebrate that success and positively reinforce those behaviors that we're trying to teach. So we ask them to stay. We might ask for half a second a second and reinforce that. Then we ask to increase that time slowly to two seconds, three seconds, five, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and you'll be able to get a dog to stay, remain in a stay for extended periods of time. Now with stay, like I say, oftentimes it's quite confusing and almost we need the dog to fail before we can really help them understand exactly what it is that we're asking of them. So when you first teach in stay, don't get frustrated or annoyed if your dog breaks from the stay. Instead, remain extremely calm and consistent as a high level canine leader and bring them straight back into the the sit position exactly where you ask them to sit down, exactly the same place, back into that sit behavior and then ask for the stay again, looking to build the amount of time that you were waiting for. Now, once the dog fails and you instantly put them back into the position, once you've repped that out a few times, then it will really start to cement in the dog's mind, oh, that's what this verbal cue of stay means. I need to stay in this position that I'm in until they tell me that I can break. So when it comes to stay, build it gradually, free shape the behavior by setting the dog up for success and being able to reinforce the success. If they fail, bring them back into that sit position really calmly and then go back a step if need be. So if you're going for 10 seconds and they failed at eight, drill it again at six or seven seconds before trying again at 10. And you'll find that your dog will make success, 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 success. They'll fail, you'll come a step back, but you'll take one step back to take four or five more steps forward. 
Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to ask, are you following us over on Instagram? If you're not, there's two accounts I would love for you to check out. The first one is our brand account, at Femre K9 Leaders, where you can see more about our industry-leading products that we create. If you're interested in following me personally, that's at I am Will Afferton, where you can see behind the scenes of me working with some of the most extreme behavior cases in the world and what it takes to run these kind of YouTube channels. And maybe if you just want to be able to come over and chat with me, that's the place for you. So there'll be links down in the description box for both of our Instagram pages. I'd love for you to come and check them out and hopefully we'll chat over there. Then we can start layering up distractions, time and distance in different circumstances when maybe you go outside. There's no other dogs or people but just the fact of being outside with different sights, smells and sounds adds a layer of distraction. What that might mean is that you need to bring the time back because you brought in new distraction and then you build up on those layers of distractions superb and we just do this incrementally step by step by step until you can have a dog in a sit and stay no matter where you are for as long as you tell them to it doesn't happen overnight it takes weeks into months into years of constantly practicing constantly drilling it, constantly training it, and constantly taking those incremental steps. And over time, you'll be able to go into Times Square, put a dog into a sit and stay, and they will remain there until you tell them to break. People only fail when they expect too much of their dog and go too much too soon. So take your time. This is something that can be taught very positively. You can make a very fun game out of it. And if you find yourself getting frustrated, that's probably a signal to stop the training session, take a breather, and then next time go back a step and build up on it from there. If you're getting frustrated, the problem lies with you, not with the dog. So take a breather, stay calm, consistent, and build back up from a step below. And I promise you, you'll get there, but teaching your dog a rock solid stay is fundamental for having that perfect canine companion that you've always dreamed of. There you have it guys, some really useful tips and tricks that you can put into practice straight away with your German short hair pointer to get them to stay. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, get involved in the comments down below as we would love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as we have two dedicated videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to see you in the next episode of the Fenrir German short hair pointer show.